Then there are some dispensationalists, especially those who follow the teaching of the late Dr. Peter Ruckman. They do not deny the clear scriptural facts that the kingdom was reoffered to Israel in early Acts. They see it. And they do not deny that the body of Christ was a mystery first revealed to Paul. They understand that. But because they want to hold on to some of their Baptist tradition, and they don't want to be labeled a hyper-dispensationalist, they try to have it both ways. And so what they do is they say the body of Christ began in the early chapters of Acts under the gospel of the kingdom. Nobody knew it until it was revealed to Paul. And Ruckman would always do this thing where he'd say, all right, all right here's a pocket knife. He'd, he'd hold something up. This is my pocket, all right? So if I have this in my pocket and I don't reveal it, does it mean it's not there? It's there before I reveal it. So what he would say is Acts chapter 2, body of Christ is formed, but it's not revealed until Paul. And that's how he would do it. Obviously, the body of Christ began before it was revealed. Look, Paul got the revelation of the body of Christ after he was saved. At some point, I don't think it was very long, but at some point. But there's no way, if you believe the Bible, and you believe, I mean, if you are consistent, let me say, these men believe the Bible, but being consistent, it cannot begin before the gospel we must believe to be in the body was revealed. Okay? And so, in order to maintain his Baptist standing, what Ruckman taught was this. The local church began as an organization in Matthew 10. That's to please the Baptist. And then he said it began as an organism, as the body of Christ in Acts chapter 2. That's to please the dispensationalist. And then it was revealed to Paul. That's for the hypers. So he covers all the bases. You see that? Look, that church in Matthew, <laughs> that is a called out assembly of believing Israel that's going to inherit the kingdom. It's not the same local church I'm in. And that church in Acts chapter 2 is a called out assembly of believing Israel is going to inherit the kingdom. That's not the same church I'm in. There's a difference. I heard one preacher say that because God is sovereign, he could have put people in the body under the gospel of the kingdom. In other words, I'm showing you from the scripture, you get in it by the gospel revealed to Paul, all right? So he said, no, they... He has to acknowledge Acts 2 was the gospel of the kingdom, but he said God could have saved him under that and put him in the body without telling him he could do whatever he wants. Well, obviously God could do whatever he wants. He's God. I understand that. But to say that God put people in the body of Christ under the gospel of the kingdom is pure speculation. Pure speculation. There's not any verses of Scripture to support that. We can only know what God does by His Word, right? You know what they do? They challenge us to prove He didn't do that. They said God could have put people in the body... Under the gospel of the kingdom, prove to me he didn't. The burden of evidence is upon you to prove that he did. I can only go by what he said. And he said it's by the gospel. Obviously, Paul received the gospel. It's by the gospel that he received that were made members of the body. The gospel of the kingdom is a different calling. It can't put you into the called out assembly of the body of Christ. Otherwise, words have no meaning. You have to be consistent, you see. And this, this is the issue. And of course, their main proof text for saying the body of Christ had to begin before Paul. If I've heard it once, I've heard it a million times. Romans 16, 7, Paul referred to those who were in Christ before me. We know the verses there. Okay? But I, I'll have to save this for next time. I'm out of time. But you know what? Being in Christ does not automatically equate to being in the body of Christ because I can prove to you in the Word of God, I can prove to you in the Word of God, in the eternal state, out in the future, God's going to gather together in one, Ephesians 1.10, all things, heaven and earth, all things in Christ. And I can prove from the Word of God that in the eternal state, there's going to be a saved nation of Israel, saved Gentile nations, and the body of Christ, three groups, but all in Christ. Being in Christ is redemption, my friend. All who are saved by the blood are in Christ. But being in the body of Christ, that's neither Jew nor Gentile. That's something very distinct. But these guys have the audacity to claim that if you believe the body began when the revelation of the gospel was given to Paul, they say, well, that creates confusion and many questions. 
I'm going to tell you right now, ever since I got consistent, because I used to be where they're at, so I know where they're coming from. But when I got consistent with my right division of the Word of God and I, and, I, and I followed it through, it has answered the most questions and cleared up the most confusion. I'm not going back to the confusing Ruckmanite dispensationalism at all. That's confusion. They're the ones that are confused. And so what I want to show you next time is this. Because people say, what's the big deal? What's the big deal? Why does it matter? Well, doesn't it make sense and isn't it true that if the body of Christ began before Paul, if the body of Christ began before Paul was saved, if it began under the gospel of the kingdom, would not the twelve apostles be in the body of Christ? Right? Well, if that's true, then Hebrews Revelation is written to the body of Christ. Now, what Ruckman would do is this. He'd say, Hebrews, Hebrews to Revelation is written to the body of Christ, but it has tribulation application. It's the opposite. It's written to the tribulation saints with a little bit of body of Christ application. He's got it backwards. There ain't nobody in Hebrews to Revelation sealed with the Holy Spirit. You want to go there? The body of Christ isn't even mentioned in Hebrews to Revelation. So what I'm saying is if you don't get consistent with this, this is going to mess you up in your doctrine eventually. So what I want to kind of focus in on next, and it'll be just part two and I'll be done with it. I want to show you if you don't acknowledge this, this division in the Word of God and you try to put Hebrews to Revelation on the body of Christ, you're going to cause major problems. It's not a little thing. It's a big issue. And that's what we're going to focus in on. Uh, next week, but we're out of time. Father, thank you for the time we had in your word. Help us to understand.